So let me start with the simple one. Okay? We're going to expand the following binomials. We're going to take a binomial, two terms, and raise it to a particular power. All right? So if I have x plus y raised to the zeroth power, what's anything raised to the zeroth power? One. one. So x plus y to the zeroth power would just equal the number one. Okay? What about x plus y, that quantity raised to the first power? X plus y. Just x plus y, because anything raised to the first power is itself. So this will equal x plus y. I'm going to make, say, 1x plus 1y for a purpose you'll see here shortly. Okay? But x plus y is totally fine. All right? x plus y squared. All right? Well, when you square a binomial, when you take x plus y and you square it, you've got to take x plus y times another x plus y. Yeah. Okay? So really, you have to foil it out. So you'd get, I don't know if you can see this. Thank you, Ken. x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared. So x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared, or x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, if you FOIL it out. OK, everybody good with that? OK, and I'll write that here. 1x squared plus 2xy plus 1y squared. OK? <coughs> Now, if I had to take it and raise it to the third power, I'd actually have to take x plus y times itself three times. So I got x plus y times x plus y times another x plus y. And if you do that three times, do two of them together first, get that answer, and then take that answer times the third x plus y. Okay? And to do that, you just got to distribute the x squared, so x to the third plus x squared y, plus 2x squared y, plus 2xy squared, plus another xy squared, plus y to the third. So I got x to the third, plus 3x squared y. Those are like terms. These are like terms, plus another 3xy squared, and plus y to the third. Okay? That starts getting ugly, all right? Starts you got a lot to do. Okay? It takes a lot of work to just take a binomial times itself three times. But the answer was 1x to the third plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus 1y to the third. Okay? And we could keep going. All right? We could take it to the fourth power and the fifth power and the sixth power. And it would take a lot of work. Okay? And a lot of time. Now, my goal today is to be able to get you to expand these binomials to higher and higher powers by kind of using a little bit of a shortcut method. And the shortcut method that I teach you today will help you to do complex probability problems, all right, um, that we have for, uh, coming up probably tomorrow and into Friday, okay? But I will want you to be able to take something like this and raise it to the fourth power and do it fairly quickly, fairly easily, all right? And once you figure out the pattern, it actually is quite simple. I know the pattern, so I know the answer to this is going to be 1x to the 4th plus 4x to the 3rd y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy to the 3rd plus 1y to the 4th. Okay, because I know the pattern, I know the trick, and I'm going to get you guys to be able to do that pretty quick too without having to actually multiply them out four times. Okay? So the first thing I'd like us to look at, what are some patterns that you see, like in the answer? What are some patterns that you see? What do you notice going on? There. The exponent in the beginning and at the end, like on the x, and then on the y on the very end, is always going to be the exponent you start out with. So you got x to the fourth to start, you got y to the fourth to the end. You got x to the third to start, you got y to the third to end, and it happens on all the powers above, right? Okay, what else? What are some other patterns you see? Well, like the second, uh, like 4x third to the 4x3y, uh, it, it's always x to the something and then y to the something the next one. Mm -hmm. Well, not all of them, but. Like those powers are No. No? <laughs> like 4. Why, you were on, I thought you were on to what I. <laughs> the coefficient. No. Like. I was looking at the uh, x plus y to the third, and then the three x squared y, like x to the something, and then the next one's y to the something. Okay. I thought that might be so they kind of flip flop a little bit. Yeah. You're real close, 
Notice the powers on the x. So what do we got here? x to the third. First. For x to the first. Right? And then really x to the zero, right? So didn't it just decrease by one each time? Does that happen on this one too? With the x? It's opposite. And it's opposite with the y? So the x powers the first term, in this case the first term is x, starts x to the fourth, then x to the third, then x to the second, it decreases by one each time, and the second part of the binomial, the y's, starts with none of them, then one, then two, then three, then four. Okay? And that's that way on all of them, if you look closely at them. Okay? So it's kind of a little pattern there. Now the numbers, the coefficients, the one, three, three, one, the one, four, six, four, one, okay? That is something that maybe not quite sure how that happens, okay? That's the connection that I'm going to make then with Pascal's triangle, okay? All right. Pascal's triangle is what you see here. I only did eight rows of it, okay? Yeah? Can you draw that? I would definitely put the first six or seven rows in my notes, yeah, if I were you. Okay? Pascal's triangle is a unique pattern of numbers. Okay? We start out with the zeroth row. We call it the zeroth row because anything raised to the zeroth power will equal the number one. Okay? So we start out with the zeroth row and we just put a one there because anything raised to the zeroth power is going to be one. In the first row, we'll put a couple ones here, one and another one. Second row, it goes one, two, one. Third row, one, three, three, one. And you start to see some similarities with the numbers that you see here with the numbers that you see over here. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Okay? You start to see those same numbers show up. Now, how did I know the fourth row of numbers was 1, 4, 6, 4, 1? Well, I know I got to have a 1 here, but how did I get this 4? 4, 3, 1, 2, 3. See these numbers right above it? Add them together. How did I get the 6? Add 3. 3 and 3. How did I get this 4? Add 3 and 1. 3 and 1. So, see how the two numbers above it add together to make the number that belongs in the next row? Okay. So 1, 5, and then we got 10 because 4 plus 6. Okay. These two numbers add together. These two numbers add together. These two numbers add together. And so on. All right. These two numbers add together. And you could keep going. You could make a Pascal's triangle fit your whole sheet of paper if you wanted to. I don't think you need to. I think six or seven rows will be beneficial for you as far as your homework is concerned. But this is just kind of a unique pattern of numbers that creates this triangle. And it has everything to do with expanding binomials. All right? And then also then to make a connection back to combinations. Let's say I wanted to know the numbers in the twelfth row of Pascal's triangle. Well, instead of actually writing out Pascal's triangle all the way to the twelfth row, you can also use combinations. Because, for example, every number in the seventh row of Pascal's triangle could, instead of writing them all out, you could just do 7C0, you get 1. 7C1, you get 7. 7C2, NCR I'm talking about. 7C2 gives you 21. 7C3 gives you 35 and so on. Okay, 7C4 also gives you 35. 7C5 gives you 21. You'll see it start repeating and work its way back down to 1. So if you really want to know the numbers in the 12th row of Pascal's triangle, you could just do 12C0, 12C1, 12C2, 12C3, 12C4 on your calculator to get those numbers instead of writing out the entire triangle all the way to the 12th row. Okay? So that's a little bit of the connection right now. How do we know like how many times you go like twelve C one, two, three, like Well you get all if you get all the way up to twelve C twelve. You can't go any further than twelve C twelve. 
because if you only have 12 objects to choose from, there's no way to choose a group of 13 of those 12. You follow what I'm saying? So it'll always start with whatever C0, then C1, then C2, all the way up to 7C7 or 8C8 or whatever it is. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. You're low on that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm trying to get through things before that thing dies. So. All right. Okay, so that's Pascal's triangle. Um, so that's kind of how I can quickly expand a binomial. All right. We did x plus y to the fourth power over there. Let's say I asked you for x plus y to the fifth. What will our answer be? You should be able to rattle it off. x plus y to the fifth. It would be 1x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth y. We decrease the x power by 1. We increase the y power by 1. So 5x to the fourth y plus 10x to the third y squared. 10x to the third, 10x to the second, y to the third. The two exponents should always add up to make 5, right? 5x, y to the fourth. 5x, 5y, 6, 1, y to the fifth. Okay? 1, y to the fifth. So it would be a quick way to expand a simple binomial like x plus y. Okay? You'll see a connection between this and probability starting tomorrow. Today we're just working on expanding binomials. Okay? So real quick, real quick, I'm going to expand a binomial here with you. So this is, a, this is kind of like a problem you'd see on the test. Expand x minus 2y to the fifth power. Now, could you take x minus y, excuse me, x minus 2y times itself five times and get the right answer? Yeah, yeah you could. If you're assuming you don't make any mistakes, you could get it right, guaranteed. Okay? A lot of, lot of steps, tons of steps. All right, but you could definitely get it right. Okay? Instead, I'm going to use Pascal's triangle to help me expand this binomial, and I think it's much faster. Okay? First of all, because this binomial is being raised to the fifth power, what row of Pascal's triangle numbers will I use? Fifth, fifth row, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, right? So I write those numbers out. All right, I kind of space them out just a little bit. But 1, and 5, and 10, and 10, and 5, and 1. So I kind of spread those out because I know I've got to use the numbers in the fifth row of Pascal's triangle because I'm raising that binomial to the fifth power. Okay? Everybody good on that? Okay? Now, this x. I know this x, on the very first term, this x needs to be raised to what power? The fifth. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put x to the fifth. How about on the next term? x to the fourth. Because doesn't it just decrease by one all the way down? Next term. x to the third. x to the second. x to the first. And then I'm not even going to put x on that last one. Now, the tricky part about this one, it's not just plus y, it's minus 2y. So I'm actually going to have to take negative 2y and start raising it to a power. The first term, do I put negative 2y on it at all? No. No. Here, I'll put negative 2y to the first. Then I'll have negative 2y to the second. Then I'll have negative 2y to the third. Then I'll have negative 2y to the fourth. And then I'll have negative 2y to the fifth. So this is kind of how I do this problem here, is I put in my coefficients, my 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Then I take the first half of the binomial and start x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, and all the way down. And then I take the second part of the binomial, start with none of them, and work my way up. And then I just need to simplify each term. What's 1 times x to the fifth? 1 times x to the fifth. x to the fifth. What's 5 times x to the 4th times negative 2y to the 1st? Well, negative 2y to the 1st is simply negative 2y. Negative 2y times 5x to the 4th would be negative 10x to the 4th y. Okay? Because really you're taking, you're taking 5 times x to the 4th times negative 2 times y. On the next one, you're taking 10 times x cubed times... Now,
Now, negative 2y squared is actually how much? 4y squared. 4y squared. So times 4 times y squared, what do you get? 40x to the third y to the second. 40x to the third y to the second. So plus 40x to the third y to the second. The next one, I'm taking 10 times x squared times negative 2y to the third. What's that equal? Negative 2y times negative 2y times negative 2y. Negative, negative 8y eight. 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 to the third. So negative 8 times y to the third. So what's that going to make? Negative 80x squared. Good. Negative 80x squared y to the third. And for time purposes, I'm going to go quickly here. Negative 2y to the fourth, that'd be a positive 16. Negative 2 to the fourth power is 16 times 5. So that's plus 80xy to the fourth. And then negative 2y raised to the fifth power would be minus 32y to the fifth. And there's your answer. You got that answer already. You didn't have to multiply it out five times. You've expanded that binomial. There are no like terms. You are done. Okay. It still takes a little bit of time. You still got to be very organized with your work, okay? But I just put one of these on the test. There's only four practice problems that go with this, so it shouldn't take you that long, okay? But that is expanding a binomial.